Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. Uh, I'm here at the Biotech Showcase in San Francisco. It's a, it's a meeting that runs parallel with the JP Morgan meeting, which is the meeting where the, the great and the good, the movers and the shakers of pharma, biotech and medtech all get together at the beginning of the year. So I'm joined by uh, Jack Reich, who's the uh, co-founder and, and, and CEO of uh, Renova Therapeutics, which is a San Diego-based gene therapy platform company. Okay, so, so Jack, I don't want to sound like, you know, rude or, you know, hey, we've been here before, but you know, gene therapy, it's, it's one of those things where it sounds like a great idea, but, you know, I remember in the mid-90s, it was like the hottest thing in town and big farmers spending, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars acquiring gene therapy companies and they all went quiet. What's different now? Uh, well, I think like many of the areas of biotech, if you look back historically since the early days, and I was involved in the early days, yeah. um, what you find is that as new technologies come out, like monoclonal antibodies, for example, these things are far more complicated when you use them as medicines than uh, first appears you know, when academics start work with them. Uh, and so uh, there are problems to be solved, and it takes a while. People have to fail before people can stand on their shoulders and take advantage of what was learned and figure out what works. So gene therapy is not any different than that. Um, the essential problem in gene therapy is the ability to deliver genes in a high enough titer to a target organ to get enough protein produced to get the effect you want. Now it's simple to say that, but it's very difficult to do it. I've been very fortunate because in my companies, and I've done three of them now, uh, but certainly the, la the last two, uh, um, Collateral Therapeutics, which was the first cardiovascular gene therapy company, we solved the problem of drug, de or, sorry, gene delivery to the heart. Right. And by solving that problem, it allowed our therapies to be uh, effective. Um, and so we use that same technique today for our lead product. And as a result, the first the animal experiments, and there are 40 publications in the best peer-reviewed journals in the world, uh, showed that that gene therapy could reverse or cure, if you will, um, congestive heart failure in animal models. Right. So, what, what's the key component of your delivery system? I mean, the vector. What do you use? Yeah. So we use an adenoviral vector. It's right. been used in about a quarter of all gene therapy sure. clinical trials in history. It's very safe. Yeah. And we insert the human gene for AC6 in there, which is the one element um, in heart muscle cells. Uh, which is down-regulated as a result of developing heart failure. Therefore, the heart muscle cells can't adequately contract. And this is from any cause development of heart failure. And so we, our scientists reason, is cardiologist, that if he could restore levels of AC6 to normal, he could restore heart function. And that's exactly what happens. So, so can you sort of describe the I guess the sort of proof of principle that you've already sort of you know, demonstrated? For, for, for sure. Well, as I say, we've got uh, 40 publications in the best journals in the world of the animal models of heart failure. Sure. So that is extensive in yeah. terms of a preclinical database. In addition, um, the gene therapy appears to be very safe. Okay, so it was atoxic in formal toxicology right. trials. Um, we then took the, uh, the product then went forward into a phase two trial that was, when it was initiated, supported by the National Institutes of Health. Right. So this doesn't happen very often, as you might imagine. And, and was that under your auspices or? Was At it first it was else? the NIH. Yeah. Um, and then we created the company. Right. And so then I uh, engaged with the NIH and over a period of time, we uh, developed and signed a public-private partnership. So our company worked with the NIH to oversee this phase two clinical study. Um, and likewise, in the phase two clinical study, the product appeared to be quite safe. There were no uh, uh, safety concerns at all as we look at the data today in that first trial. Right. Okay, and how many patients was that in? 56 patients. Right. Right. It was double-blind placebo-controlled. Right. And so most of the patients got the gene therapy, 42 patients, and 14 patients got a placebo. And in the gene therapy, it was, of course, five different doses, right? Yeah. So, uh, so a dose response study. And, and in fact, uh, this was presented, the results, uh, in London in September at the European Society of Cardiology. Yeah. And in fact, uh, I'll just talk a little bit about those results. I don't want to go too deeply because the results of the study are about to be published in a major journal, so I don't want to preempt that. Sure. Okay. 
but um, we, we certainly were able to demonstrate dose response. And we used uh, surrogate markers, uh, uh, surrogate endpoints in the study, uh, because um, it was a first study and there was no anticipation that morbidity and mortality, the hard endpoints, would be changed in a, in a study this small. Okay, um, but in fact, we, we definitely saw uh, very encouraging results on those hard endpoints as well as significant results on... And, and those surrogate endpoints that you yeah. used are the sort of endpoints that would be acceptable to, to the regulators? Uh, of course, these are measures of heart function like ejection fraction, DPDT and time on a treadmill. These are universally recognized as surrogates of morbidity and mortality but we also collected morbidity and mortality, but they were for safety, they weren't the primary endpoints. But as I say, very, very encouraging. So uh, our plan is to go forward into phase three this year in 2016 and do trials in the US and the European Union. And if the results in those trials look like uh, what we've seen in the phase two trials, then I anticipate that this very well could be a registered medicine. And is this gonna be done on Renova's dollar or? Uh, yes, these are going to be done in Renova's dollar. Renova's a very unusual company. We have no venture capital at all, no venture capital backing. So you're backed by what, angels, high net worth individuals? Very high net worth individuals. And at this point, uh, and this is important to mention right now, we also have a second generation product, both for, one for heart failure, one for type 2 diabetes, that are simple IV injections. So a nurse could administer these products in a doctor's office. Okay. And so, um, because of that, uh, we are already engaged in partnering discussions uh, on second generation products with major entities. And so that we anticipate that will happen this year in 16. We'll ha announce uh, some deal. And as a result of that, we'll, we'll, uh, we will have raised enough money to do everything we want to do. So will the first generation product, I mean, if you get a deal with the second generation product, will the first generation product just be a sort of a proof, proof of principle? Oh, no, not at all. It? This is going to be a major commercial right. product. Okay. There are 30 million people approximately in the industrialized world right. that, have, that have congestive heart failure. Right. And this is growing by 6 to 8 percent a year. So this is a huge market. Um, and the product we're talking about appears to have the potential um, to restore heart function to these people. Oh, it's disease modifying. Though. It is, absolutely. Right, okay. And are you going to because that's therefore, I mean, if you're talking about that kind of, uh, you know, bandwidth in terms of a sort of a patient population, are you going to have to have a partner to, to do that? I'm assuming you do have to have a partner. Um, no, we don't, is right. the answer. These are single-use biologics. Right. See, what you're thinking about are typically drugs for these diseases yeah. that are given every day. When you develop those products, you have to have thousands of people in a phase three trial because um, you're, you're trying to show small differences from the medicines that are already on the market and trying to demonstrate safety when people are taking these things every day. With our products, it's a single use product. It's only given once. And so um, typically with health authorities, single use biologics, which is what we're developing, require you know three to 500 patients to generate enough safety and the efficacy, especially with our products, where the, the potency is so spectacular, um, you, we were able to show effects, you know, uh, in 56 patient study. So uh, we're anticipating that the phase three uh, program will be somewhere in the 500 patient range. Okay, and what's the sort of the timetable for, uh, you know, readouts with the CHF? So we're, 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 we're anticipating that between two and three years from now, we'll complete the phase three program. Okay. Uh, submit dossiers and perhaps even be on the verge of approval. Right, okay. And then with the second generation, the, the focus there, I mean, what, what, what's, what, what's different? Well, what's different is their single IV injections. Right. So because they're so simple to administer, I, we think, that, and especially the product for type 2 diabetes, there are 400 million patients that have this problem. And as you know, they have to take their blood glucose levels, they have to have insulin, they have to have drugs. And what we're presenting here is a potentially a complete alternative to that, where they will not, no longer need insulin or drugs. The animals don't. Right. And what is, what is the gene therapy actually going to be doing? In those it's going to be restoring uh, the, well, the body's ability to correctly read blood glucose levels and make enough insulin to take care of it. Right. And so essentially these people will not have diabetes anymore. 
Right, okay. And are you, is this for type one patients or do you think it's type two? Which is 98% of the market roughly. Yeah, yeah, sure. So as I say, 400 million people have this problem and 800 million people approximately are pre-diabetic. Okay, it's so, a huge market. And where are you at the moment in the development of that? We're, we're well uh, into the animal studies and that's why I'm able to talk about the results because the results in animals are really breathtaking. So uh, in the animal studies, you take usually uh, he young, healthy adult animals. You start feeding them a high fat diet every day. Within about two months, they're diabetic. And then you ran blindly randomize them uh, uh, and assign them to a placebo or the gene therapy. It's single injection. And you continue the high fat diet. And two months later, the placebo animals are much worse. right? And the animals that receive the gene therapy have been normalized. They don't have diabetes anymore. So they eat a high fat diet every day. They look like, like little tennis balls with four legs, but yet they've gained 40% less weight than the placebo animals, right. and their blood glucose is completely normal. Right. Okay. So they don't need drugs. So the timetable for, for, for that is, is what? When do you expect to so try we, to get So we that? hope sort of by the end of this year or, or early next year to enter the clinic yeah. and do a dose response study in patients with type 2 diabetes. If, if those patients' results look anything like these animals, animal results, you can just imagine the impact this is going to have. Right. And at that point, you'll then look for uh, a, a partner? To, I, we're to... already being uh, okay. uh, assailed. Okay. Okay. Good. And, and you guys are, are, are financed to be able to, 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 to fulfill all these ambitions? We are. Yes. Because of the, you know, obviously the, the, the potential of our products is enormous and anybody knows that. So quite different than what you typically see in biotech and certainly in gene therapy, where most of the efforts are, are focused on a, a specific cancer, orphan products, things like that, that are much smaller markets. Now there's certainly a need for those things, without a doubt. But we're the only gene therapy company, I believe I can say this, that's focused on the largest healthcare problems. And very few biotechs are focused in that area. Uh, and, and as you can imagine, uh, efforts to develop new drugs for these things don't compare to the potential of a gene therapy. So, so we're, we're in a very fortunate position. Uh, I'm going to tell you a lot of it's luck. There were serendipitous discoveries. We didn't just sit around a table one morning and say, let's start a company and we're going to you know, look for you know, the, uh, uh, modifying uh, uh, therapeutics, if you will, for these major diseases. This is the hand that was dealt to us and we pursued it. Great. Oh, well, Jack, thanks for stopping by and, Thank and, and, and sharing the story with us. Thank you very much. Cheers. Pleasure. Goodbye.